TikTok, time to rock. How's everyone doing? Let me know if you can hear me right now. I think everything's fine. Again, I always have to wait because there's a delay to see uh, see myself show up here. All right, I see my face. Does everyone hear me? We will be discussing the age of Aisha. Hey, look at that. I actually see the uh, I see the captions popping up, so I guess everyone's hearing me. All right, Radical Moderate said, coming in good. Well, we are going to be taking a look at the age of Aisha in Muslim sources. And this came up for, for a particular reason. Um, I think it's always an important topic to discuss um, because... Muslims are claiming that Muhammad is the greatest man who ever lived. And they're claiming this as an apologetic. They're, they're offering this as an argument. So if they're offering this as an argument, then it makes sense for us to examine Muhammad's life and see if he really is as great as Muslims claim. And when we do this, of course... <laughs> When we examine Muhammad's life, you know what? If we were to make a list of like the top 10 worst things that a person could do, Muhammad did like six or seven of them. So it's very interesting to claim that that guy who did so many things that would horrify any normal person, this guy is the most moral, greatest man who's ever lived. And the reason that's strange is during the course of your day, you probably don't meet anyone who did the kinds of things that Muhammad did. And even though you could, you could say good things about Muhammad, you could say he's dedicated to prayer and he was dedicated to, you know, he encouraged his followers to help orphans and things like that. Um, you can't ignore, you can't ignore the other things he did, right? I mean, John Wayne Gacy is one of the most notorious serial killers in history, but you know, he would go as a clown to kids' birthday parties and help out with the local Boy Scout groups. And you know, you, you could point out some things and say, wow, what a nice guy. He would help young people get jobs. Of course, behind the scenes, he's, he's taking those boys and, and raping them and killing them and burying them under his house. Uh, but yeah. You can't just you can't just say, oh, look at these good things someone did. Hey, Hitler was a great painter. Hitler was a great painter. Should we just you know should we ignore that whole Holocaust thing um, because he was a great pa painter? Of course not. Um, so Muslims are the ones who are telling us, hey, this is our God. Now notice this would be completely different. This would be completely different from, uh, let's say, David or someone like that doing something horrible, because. The Bible condemns prophets for doing things when they do something wrong. It doesn't justify the things that they did. But Muslims are not saying that Muhammad did something wrong when he did these horrible things. They're saying, nope, all of this was perfectly right. And the Quran itself lays down Muhammad as a pattern of conduct for Muslims. So uh, this is just some this is just some very interesting reasons that we have to look through the life of Muhammad. Um, let me look at a couple comments here. So Noel says, uh, where's, where's Shamoon? Uh, Shamoon is out in Phoenix, Arizona. So that's where Shamoon is. Um, he'll actually be with me next week. Next week he's coming for a visit, uh, because we're going to a conference together. Me, Sam, Vocab, uh, we're heading to a conference. So, uh, Sam will actually be here, uh, be here like probably side by side. I'm not sure how we'll, uh, how we'll, uh, fit that, uh, work that together. As far as, as far as me just being by myself right now, it was just, um, I was reading a comment earlier from someone and I decided, hey, instead of me answering it in the comments section, um, why don't I just answer it live, just discuss it live. And that way other people who hear the same nonsense can, uh, can look at it. So, um, earlier I was, uh, 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 Matter of fact, I should have I should have put it up on the screen. Um, I got a screenshot. Anyway, um, I didn't uh, I didn't get that ready, but uh, I have a, a comment for those of you who are watching the last live stream. For those of you who are watching the last live stream, you might remember there was a guy in the chat who said that he's an experimental philosopher, and that I was making false claims about. Islam or Muhammad, he said something like that. And so I went ahead and 
stopped, uh, stopped for a moment and said, okay, tell me, tell me the false things I'm saying about Islam. And I didn't see him post any response in the chat. If he did, I, I, I missed it. The, the chat comes really quickly. So I didn't see a response from him then because we were going to go ahead and, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, I was reading comments. So I lost my train of thought. Um, we would have addressed it. We would have addressed it if he had, if he had uh, given evidence that we were uh, uh, that we were saying something false. Um, so this guy called himself uh, an experimental philosopher and uh, some sort of uh, statistics guy or something like that. Anyway, afterwards, um, afterwards he started posting messages um, claiming that uh, I'm getting things wrong. And the the example he went with was the age of Aisha. And he presented a kind of interesting response that I, I just hadn't seen before. And so, it, you know, the, the, the objections, um, to the argument about Aisha and the age of Aisha that come up, you kind of want to, want to pounce on them as they come out so that they don't gain a lot of ground because guys, there, there just is no good defense of Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. You can say, yes, it was a different culture. It was a different time, things like that. That would make sense if you were talking about any other person other than the pattern of conduct for all mankind for the rest of, uh, the rest of uh, our existence, right? Muhammad is laid down in the Quran as the pattern of conduct. So that's a guy we need to be holding to a very high standard because he's impacting uh, the entire world. So we have to look at these kinds of things. Um, but there is there is no good Muslim defense of this. They have a ton of bad defenses. Um, but uh, this gentleman um, who responded went ahead and uh, he said, Here, here's his argument in a nutshell. He said, David, when you talk about Aisha being nine, you're just taking the Salafi position, getting your information from Salafis and, and, and Wahhabis, instead of going to the vast majority of regular Muslims in the streets and seeing what they believe about the age of Aisha. And he was saying that this is going to discredit my work and um, people aren't going to trust me because I'm making this horrible mistake. Now, those of you who have <laughs> those of you who have been uh, been following my videos, watching my videos, um, some of you have been watching my videos for, I don't know, 12 years or something like that. I forget when I started, but, um, you've been watching my videos for a really long time. Those of you who've been watching my videos for a long time. Tell me right now, if you think my argument about the age of Aisha is, well, Salafis say she was nine. Modern Salafis say she was nine. Therefore she was nine. Let me know. Let, let, let me know in the comments. If that's what you think my argument is, and if you can think of anywhere I have ever made that claim, that's the Salafi position on the age of Aisha, and that's the way it is. So let's just go with that, and we'll ignore, we'll ignore um, what all other Muslims think. Anyone, uh, anyone think that's my argument there? All right. So. What's the actual argument, right? Because, and so what, what this guy is saying is I should just go to, you know, average Muslim on the streets, take a poll and see that many Muslims believe that Aisha was 19 when Muhammad married her and I should go with them. And that way I don't end up embarrassing myself. And uh, I hope he's watching here. But uh, <laughs> the, the reason this is interesting is this guy's calling himself an experimental philosopher. Now, anyone who has any background in philosophy should know what a straw man is, the straw man fallacy. That's where you misrepresent your opponent's position and then attack your own misrepresentation of his uh, position rather than attacking his actual position. So what is, oh, got to stop that. So what is the actual, the actual argument? There we go. Terrorize that like button, ladies and gentlemen. You want to mutilate that like button, wage jihad on it. Pretend, pretend that that, like button is one of Muhammad's rebellious wives and that you're Muhammad and just punch that thing. All right. So <laughs> uh, what's my actual argument? Well, my actual argument is that all of the Muslim sources agree that she was nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her. And all of the best sources that Muslims tell us to go to, to learn about Muhammad across the board, they say Aisha was nine years old. 
when Muhammad had sex with her. There is some slight disagreement about whether she was six or seven when the marriage contract was written. Um, Muslim scholars respond to this not by saying that, you know, this is this is uh, an error or something like that. They'll just say she was probably six years old and some change, like, you know, six years, seven months or something like this. So it could be described, you know, either way. She, it could be described as I was six years old. That was the number of years I had passed or um, I was getting close to seven years or something like that. So it could be described in, in either way. Um, but the sources across the board, there are a couple, I think maybe one or two that I can think of that say she was, she was 10 when Muhammad had sex with her. Um, but the overwhelming majority of the sources that Muslims actually tell us to go to, right? These are our best, most reliable sources. These are the ones, uh, these are the ones that have passed the, the methodology of our highest scholars, uh, across the board. They say she was nine years old. And so we are going to, we are going to take a look at these. Um, oh, for for um, let me see. Who I just saw a comment. I wanted to get. I wanted to respond to. Um, <laughs> calm down for the insults on Islam. Huh? I'm actually pretty calm. But uh, gosh, why would you think it's an insult to say that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl? Why? Uh, why would you think that's an insult? I don't know. Um, Eli here says, why do Muslims claim Mary was 12 years old when Jesus was born? Um, well, Eli, they, they, they try to set that up as a, as a parallel, right? So, hey, guys, if you're saying that uh, Muhammad was immoral for having sex with a nine-year-old girl named Aisha, uh, why don't you condemn God for impregnating Mary when she was 12 or something like that? Um, and so you're asking why they claim she was 12. Uh, there, we, we don't have anything remotely resembling a reliable source on the age of Mary. So the claim would basically be based on uh, Jewish customs. Maybe you could marry a girl, you know, in the you, you could mar girls could be married off in the 12 to 14 year old range. Uh, but notice that's that's not the same as saying here's what the age of Mary was. We don't we don't have a source on the age of of Mary. Um, so that's one problem with this Muslim response. Uh, two, there is a big difference between the age of, of 12. Even if even if Muslims were right, there's a big difference between the age of 12 and the age of nine. Uh, girls who are nine years old uh, only very rarely have, have, have entered puberty. And Aisha hadn't, according to the Muslim sources. Um, so uh, whereas a girl who's 12 could be uh, could be well in in Puberty, right? Um, so even if we granted it, which I wouldn't, unless they come up with a source, I'm, I'm never going to grant that that Mary was was 12 years old. Um, but so e even if even if we did grant it, even if we had a source saying that she was 12, uh, there, you know, a, a girl who's 12 years old can be can be finishing puberty, or you know, at, at the very least, many girls would start puberty um, by 12 or so. So no, uh, so we have uh, no source that says that, but even if we did, still a big difference. You're talking about a three-year difference at a very important stage in the lives of uh, girls. Um, the other problem there is this doesn't involve anyone uh, having sex. You could say, well, Joseph was going to have sex with her because he was marrying her, but Joseph isn't set up as the pattern of conduct in Christianity, right? Muhammad is set up as the pattern of conduct in Islam. Joseph, as far as Christianity is, because Joseph could have been an axe murderer. It wouldn't affect Christianity. He's not our, he's not our pattern of conduct. So notice the parallel, which is supposed to refute our argument, fails in every possible way, as do Muslim arguments uh, in general when they're trying to defend uh, their prophet. All right. So let's actually let's actually um, look at what some of the sources say. We'll get the sources down and then we'll see. What the, uh, we'll see what the actual position is, what the actual argument is, and if, <laughs> okay, okay, so Jimmy says, I'm not sticking up for the religion, it's just at times you say stuff like smash the like button like Muhammad did Aisha. Well, Muhammad did punch Aisha, right? He punched her. He caught her out of breath, knew that she had snuck out of the house to see what he was doing. And uh, he came back and said what you're doing. She tried to lie about it and he punched her in her chest. So 
yes, I'm going to make fun of him for stuff like that, right? This is a, we're doing this live stream. We're doing this live stream on Muhammad's conduct, that they're setting, the, laying this da- man down as the pattern of conduct for all people. And so I'm, I'm going to make fun of Muhammad. I'm going to make fun of Islam. If you don't like it, hey, there are other channels out there that you could be watching right now. But don't sit here in the comment section whining the entire time. All right, so let's look at what the Muslim sources actually say about the age of Aisha, and we'll go through a variety of them just so we can see them. And then if there are, I haven't, I'm not, I haven't read many of the comments here, but if Muslims want to raise some objection, now keep in mind, the focus right now isn't, it's not going to be on uh, the ethics of Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. So we're not going to be looking, we, we'll do this in a different live stream. In fact, I, um, this is Black History Month. I've been posting a lot of videos about Islam and race Probably in March, um, I'll try to come out with a series just because this is such an important issue. And, and it, there's such there's such uh, an amazing effort on the part of Muslims and defenders of Islam to distort the evidence. I mean, this is appearing in in uh, in in newspapers and on on popular websites and so on, claiming that Aisha was much older than nine. that She was 18, 19. Um, there is such a massive effort to mislead and distort the, the truth, to mislead people and distort the truth on this issue, that uh, we're going to need some handy, handy responses. So I'm thinking what I might do is make like one video where I just go through all the sources and what they say, and then a series of other videos, a series of other videos going through the Muslim responses one by one. And it's actually very easy to do because most of them are based on lies or just sheer misrepresentations of, uh, of the evidence. So... Um, but for now, right now, we're not addressing whether it was good or bad. I mean, we'll, we'll obviously say a few things. I'm talking about the focus here. Um, so we're not, focus, we're not focused right now on w- how Muslims can justify Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. We can do that in a different live stream, and I'll, I'll make some videos on it. Um, we're just focusing on how old she was, right? Simple question. How, how old was she? Because you have two basic Muslim defenses. You have one, Muslims who claim that Aisha wasn't nine years old. She was older, right? She was 18, 15, 19, something. She was much older than what what people are claiming, what the Muslim sources say. That's one claim. And the other, the other way to re- reply, the other way to um, defend Muhammad is to say, yeah, she was nine, to grant that. Um, but there were these good reasons for Muhammad having sex with a nine-year-old girl. And they'll say things like, uh, you know, hey, Aisha was really good at collecting hadiths. So, you know, Allah knew, Allah knew that Aisha would be good at collecting hadiths. So he had to have Muhammad marry her and have sex with this nine-year-old girl so that she would remember all kinds of things uh, that Muhammad did and be able to pass those on. Because as as everyone knows, there there's no better way to pass on historical information than uh, having sex with a nine-year-old girl. Um, but Muslims will, will make that claim that this is, this is Allah's brilliant method. This is Allah's brilliant method um, for, for, uh, for getting some good history down. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some Muslim sources. Uh, I pulled up a variety. All right, this is, uh, we'll start with uh, the most popular Muslim sources, Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Take a look at these. So uh, notice, the, uh, notice the chapter heading here. This is the chapter heading in Sahih al-Bukhari. Giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. Giving one's young children in marriage. That sounds like a a 19-year-old girl. And he quotes, he quotes Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran, which, uh, matter of fact, I believe I can, I got that pulled up too. Let's go ahead and read that really quick. Uh, Surah 65, verse 4. Man, I'm getting good with these sources up on the screen. All right, Surah 65, verse 4. This is a verse about um, divorce proceedings for uh, different types of uh, wives. And so basically the ruling in Islam was that if you were going to divorce a woman, you would have to wait for three monthly cycles. So three uh, periods. You had to wait till she went through, till she had her period three times so that you can make sure that she wasn't pregnant. Um, but the, the question came up, the question arose, well, what about wives who don't have a monthly cycle? They don't have their period for some reason. And there were basically three categories there. And that was pregnant women don't have a monthly cycle. Uh, women who are too old to have a 
there are women who are too old to have a monthly cycle, and there are women, uh, girls, who are too young to have a monthly cycle. They haven't reached puberty yet. And the Quran lays down um, how you divorce, how you divorce uh, these various groups. So, uh, Surah 65, verse 4, And those of your women, as have passed the age of monthly courses, so these are women who are too old to have a uh, period anymore, for them the idda, that's that's the, the waiting period uh, to divorce them. So you say, you, you decide you're going to divorce, and then you have to wait a certain certain amount of time. The idda, the prescribed period, if you doubt about their periods, is three months. So instead of waiting three monthly cycles, you wait three months instead. And for those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, so this is talking about girls who, girls who um, haven't reached the age where they're going to have a monthly cycle. Um, their idda, their prescribed period, is three months likewise, except in case of death. And for those who are pregnant, whether they are divorced or their husbands are dead, their idda prescribed period is until they lay down their birth, so until they have the baby. And whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make his matter easy for him. So what you have here is Surah 65, verse 4, lays down divorce proceedings for divorcing a prepubescent girl. If you've married a girl and you decide to divorce her and she still hasn't even reached puberty, this is how you have to do it. You have to wait three months. Um, now, you, you could object here and say, well, this doesn't mean the guy had sex with her. Yes, it did, because the Quran says that there is no waiting period. There is no waiting period. If a man hasn't consummated the marriage, if a man hasn't had sex with his bride, there is no waiting period. So the fact that there is a waiting period here, waiting to make sure the girl didn't somehow get pregnant, this means that the man was having sex with her. And so the Quran lays down rules for divorcing girls who have not reached puberty after having sex with them. And therefore, um, look at what we have in Bukhari. He actually quotes part of this verse and for those, he says, by virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, i.e. they are still immature, Surah 65, verse 4, and the idda for the girl before puberty, <laughs> he even says it, right? Before puberty, before puberty. He's laying all this down as the introduction to this section on Aisha. So tell me, Muslims, uh, did your greatest hadith scholar just not understand what was what was going on here? Because he's connecting all of this. He's connecting Muhammad's relationship with a nine-year-old girl having sex with her when she's nine years old. He's connecting it to the Quran and specifically saying that this refers to uh, the waiting period of a girl before puberty, right? Before puberty. Look at the chapter heading: giving one's children, one's young children in marriage is permissible. Why is it permissible? By virtue of the statement of Allah. And for those who have no monthly courses, i.e. they are still immature. So, here's what the Hadith says. 5133 of Sahih al-Bukhari narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. until his death. So we, we, we pretty good on that one because we're going to start zooming through these. Um, and I just basically want to get all the sources up on the screen and, and make a couple of connections here. Um, so here's uh, another from Sahih al-Bukhari. Notice the chapter heading here. The marrying of a daughter by her father to a ruler. And we have a little uh, note there on, on Umar. Umar said, the prophet asked for the hand of my daughter Hafsa and I married her to him. This is just to confirm that when Muhammad wants your daughter, you hand her over as his devout followers did. Narrated Aisha, 5134, Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old. Hashem said, I have been informed that Aisha remained with the Prophet for nine years, i.e. until his death. So, how old was she? According to that hadith, nine years old. Let's keep going. Number 5158 of Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated, narrated Urwa. The Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years, i.e. until his death. And the chapter heading there is whoever consummated his marriage with a lady of nine years of age. So, 
How old was she? Nine years old. I feel like that could be a, a song. Like, like that, that would be the chorus. How old was she? Nine years old. How old was she? Nine years old. Could even put the, uh, the sources into the song. I'm glad I have friends who, uh, write rap lyrics because <laughs> we can come up with cool stuff like that. All right, let's keep going. Sahil Bukhari, number 6130, narrated Aisha. This one's actually important. Don't miss, uh, you'll see why this is important. And those of you who've been watching, uh, <laughs> hold up. I see Muslims in the comments section saying she wasn't nine, she was 19. Wow. This is amazing. Dude, stick around. Stick around. If, if you're saying that, that Aisha was nine, I mean, that she was 19 instead of nine, uh, stick around because we're going to want to, uh, we're going to want to, uh, we're going to want to deal with your arguments. So get your arguments ready. Get your best arguments ready. Get your best arguments. I know there are, there are all kinds of articles um, that claim that Aisha was much older, but we're going to go through what your sources say, what the first generation of Muslims said, what Aisha said about herself, and then uh, then we'll take a look at uh, we'll take a look at your responses. Um, and and got, I mean, the Muslim Muslims who are who are here. Um, yes, we are. I'm I'm going to uh, lay all of this out, but we do want to hear from you, right? We do want to hear from you. So we're happy that you, um, we do want to have an exchange, right? We want this to be a discussion. So if you can defend the claim that your prophet was, uh, uh, was not guilty of marrying a nine-year-old girl, um, I'd like to see it because if I'm wrong, then, then that, that would be good to know that I'm wrong. So number 6130 narrated Aisha. I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the prophet and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the prophet would call them to join and play with me. Now, by the way, um, given the other things we know about Muhammad, you know, that he, that he would have his fo followers uh, suck on his fingers, that he would suck on the tongues of little boys and so on. This passage, if we, you know, if, if the only things we knew about Muhammad were good things that weren't ever creepy, then this passage wouldn't stand out as creepy at all. But given the number of really creepy things that we know about Muhammad, this comes across as creepy, right? So this is Aisha saying, I used to play with dolls in the presence of the prophet. And my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves. So these little girls, oh no, the prophet's here. Let's, let's not play with dolls around him. Uh, but the prophet would call them to join and play with me. And so, uh, yeah, knowing what we know about Muhammad, now it sounds creepy. Um, but here's here's the important part. We have a comment here. We have some commentary um, from Fath al-Bari. And the reason we have commentary is playing with dolls is supposedly for, forbidden in Islam. You're not supposed to play with dolls. But that only applies to girls who hadn't reached puberty yet. Right? So we have the commentary here. The playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden. So you're not allowed to play with dolls. Well, wait a minute. If you're not allowed to play with dolls, why, are, why, is, why is Muhammad allowing Aisha and her friends to play with dolls right in front of him? Well, we have the answer. But it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. Not yet reached the age of puberty. So... There you go. So according to this, had Aisha reached puberty when she had sex with Muhammad? Notice, the only thing you could do there is say this was happening before Muhammad married her, right? She was playing with, the, if you wanted to argue that Aisha had actually reached puberty, which many Muslim, Muslims generally want to do. If you want to say that Muhammad, uh, even though the Quran allows him to have sex with a prepubescent girl, because that's what Allah says in Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran, uh, even if you want to argue that, uh, the, even if you want to argue that it's okay because of what uh, Allah says in the Quran, Muslims don't want to say that Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent girl. So they would have to claim there that she was playing with dolls, but this was before. This was years before Muhammad married her. So maybe she was like six six when she was playing with the dolls, right? Because th there it doesn't say how old she was. It just says she hadn't reached puberty, right? So, well, let's keep going and see what we have here. 3480, this is Sahih Muslim here. Sahih Muslim 3480. It was narrated that Aisha said, the prophet married me when I was six years old and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine years old. So, how old was she at consummation? Nine years old. Sahih Muslim, 3481. Here we go. It was narrated from Aisha 
that the prophet married her when she was seven. I had mentioned that you do have some vari variation between six and seven on the uh, writing of the marriage certificate. That the prophet married her when she was seven years old, and she was taken to him as a bride when she was nine years old, and she took her dolls with her. He died when she was 18 years old. Now, remind me, what does it mean if you are still playing with dolls? It means you hadn't reached puberty. She was taken to Muhammad's house when she was nine. For, she was taken to his house for, to consummate the marriage. And she took her dolls with her. If Aisha was still playing with dolls, and you could only play with dolls if you hadn't reached puberty yet, and she was still playing with dolls when she was taken to Muhammad's house so that Muhammad could have sex with her, what does that mean? It means, obviously, obviously, that she had not reached puberty when Muhammad was having sex with her. Let's continue. Sahih Muslim 3482. It was narrated from Aisha that the Messenger of Allah married her when she was six years old and consummated the marriage with her when she was nine years old and he died when she was 18 years old. Now look at this. They're very specific, right? They're laying down some very specific... They're giving us a timeline here, right? She was six years old when the marriage contract was written. She was nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage and then she was with him for nine years until he died. So she, he died when she was 18 years old. They're giving us a complete timeline. And this is in Islam's most trusted sources on the life of Muhammad. There is no source that Muslims have that they regard as more trustworthy on the life of Muhammad than the ones that we just quoted. And so if you want to say he's, Aisha was some other age, what do you base it on? What are you going to base it on? If, you, if you're getting your information, you're, you're either getting your information from these sources, um, in which case, what, what is it? What, what's your source that says that Aisha was uh, somehow older? Um, or you're getting it from somewhere else. If you're getting it from somewhere else, which you don't even have anything from anywhere else, but even if you did, if you had some weird hadith that note from some collection that no one's ever heard of, how do you say trust that and don't trust our earliest, uh, most reliable hadith collections that we all love and we say that uh, th these are the best, these are our best sources? How do you throw out multiple narrations from your most trusted sources? Let's look at another. This is Sunan Abu Dawood. Sunan Abu Dawood, 2121. 21. Aisha narrated, The Messenger of Allah married me while I was a girl of seven years. Suleiman, one of the narrators, said, or six, and he consummated the marriage when I was a girl of nine. How old was she? Nine years old. Sunan an nasai we're about to wrap these up. I just wanted to, to give uh, multiple sources uh, in the most important collections and then a couple others. So this is Sunan an nasai Notice the uh, chapter heading here, Consummation of Marriage with a Girl of Nine. It was narrated, 3380, it was narrated that Aisha said, the Messenger of Allah married me when I was six and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine and I used to play with dolls. Still playing with dolls. Why? Because she was nine and hadn't reached puberty. History of At-Tabri. This is the History of At-Tabri, volume 39. The Prophet married Aisha in Shawal in the 10th year after the beginning of his prophethood. Three years before the immigration, he consummated the marriage in Shawal eight months after the immigration. On the day he consummated the marriage with her, she was nine years old. So, we go. We go source after source after source, um, whether you go the Sira collections or the Hadiths or the commentaries, wherever you go, Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage with her. Um, the, the only higher source that Muslims could go to would be the Quran, but the Quran certainly doesn't deny that she was nine years old and the Quran specifically allows men to marry and have sex with and divorce girls all before they reach puberty, right? Imagine this. You could be a little girl. You could be a, you could be a little, <laughs> this is disgusting. You could be a little girl and say, I'm on my third husband now. I haven't even reached puberty, All right? Because you, you could marry a guy. He could have sex with you, div divorce you. He'll have to wait three months. And then, you know, you just keep doing that. Um, very, very strange religion. All right. So everyone, um, 
Just saw a comment. Uh, DAB said, David, what website or software are you using for these hadiths? Um, I just took screenshots. I took a bunch of screenshots. So you, you, you see me, uh, bring up the Bible and stuff on this screen, uh, for the past couple live streams. Uh, there I'm just, I've got Bible Gateway pulled up and I just, you know, uh, I tell this program I'm using to, uh, look at that screen so I can put it up there. Uh, but for these, I just took screenshots from the PDFs of, uh, of the sources. And if you, if you want the PDFs, and those can be handy because uh, in my videos, when you see me put a source up on the screen and you see it side by side, English and Arabic, um, I didn't scan those myself. Sometimes I do. If, if I can't find an actual PDF that someone else has made, um, then I'll have to, I'll have to scan it myself. Um, like the video I just made on uh, the penalty for saying that Muhammad was a black man being deaf. Um, that I had to, uh, I had to actually scan myself. Well, my wife, my wife scanned it. I, I cut it. I had cut it out of the book and, uh, it, it hate, I hate dismembering some of these books, but if you, if you press it down, sometimes the books, you press them down and it still looks like, it looks like the, the writing is bent on there. Um, so if, if I really want a good shot, I'll, I'll cut those out. But for, for most of my sources that I, that I put up on the screens, like the ones I'm using now, I have the PDFs. Um, that you can download if you want. You go to kalamullah.com. That's K-A-L-A-M-U-L-L-A-H.com. You go there, you go to the Hadiths, and you can download PDFs for all of the collections that I just quoted. That, that, that all, all the sources that I just put on the screen, you can download the PDFs. And the reason that's helpful is there are, other, there are multiple versions, there are multiple translations of uh, some of the Muslim sources. Um, so sometimes people say, hey, David, you said this is the number, but I looked in Bukhari and it's not the same number. Uh, or I looked in Muslim and it's not the same number. Well, the reason is you, you're, you're using a different, uh, a different edition. So if you want the same editions I use, you can go to kalamala.com and uh, download that. Uh, download the PDFs and those will line up perfectly because that's where I'm taking, that's where I'm taking the screenshots from. Um, so that's just a little bit of a, uh, for those people who want to, want to follow the sources. And it's, it's good to just have the Muslim sources. What's really cool about those sources, the, the ones on Kalamala is they're searchable. So if you actually want to look up something, right? Like if you want to look up the word jihad or something like this, they're searchable. You, you click that in the find and it'll give you every reference in, in, uh, in, the hadith collections on on jihad so very helpful if you're trying to do a bunch of research on islam all right so we oh i i guess that answered another question because he said uh david please where do i get the sahih al-bukhari hadith please um yeah palamala.com i mean you could get it, you could get it from amazon right that I, I use the daru salam edition right they're, they're the main they're the main publishers of hadith nowadays um, but they just have the, the simplest numbering system. And back in the day, uh, the Sahih al-Bukhari collection, it had a, a strange numbering system where it would go, it would go volume by volume, right? So volume one would, you know, have a bunch of hadiths in it and they would start off at one. Then you went to volume two and it would start over again, right? It would start over in, in the numbering system. They would start over at one. Then you go to volume three, they would start over at one. Whereas um, the, the Darus Salaam edition that I'm using now just numbers them straight all the way through, right? So so you you, you know where to go. You, th there's only one, you know, number 7152 and stuff like that. You So you just, you, you find them like that. Um, so uh, yeah, go to Kalam Allah. I'll spell it again. K A L A M U L L A H dot com. Uh, then you'll have different categories. You'll have Qurans that you can download. You'll have Hadiths that you can download. Go to the Hadiths, click on Hadiths, and then you can have Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. You're going to have all six of the main collections that are in Sahih Sitta. And so you can you can just get the ones you're interested in. And you can download them all. They're searchable. Should be good fun. All right. Well, we just looked at all of Islam's most trusted sources. All of Islam's most trusted sources. And they all say across the board that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage with her. And so, how old was she? She was nine years old, right? If, you, if you're if you saying she was something else, you'd better have a good argument that's more powerful than all of your sources unanimously saying the same thing about her, right? You need something better than that. So what do you have that is better than that? So uh, Muslims, I'm going to give you this opportunity to give us some arguments, give us, <laughs> this is true. 
Luke Wayne says Muhammad would have been busted in jail today. That that is correct. You would you would uh, you would be in a lot of trouble today for having uh, sex with a nine year old girl, and many of Muhammad's followers are in jail right now for having uh, uh, having sex grooming the grooming gangs over in the UK for for doing these kinds of things with uh, with young girls. Um, so Muslims in the comments section in the chat going to give you this opportunity and we'll let you defend your prophet. Now keep keep in mind, if you want to defend him by saying, yes, he was nine years old, but he had this great reason for having sex with a nine-year-old girl, uh, you, you know, you could do that. that that's, that's not relevant to what we're saying right now. But uh, if you're going to challenge the age of Aisha, this is the time to do it. Uh, Elizabeth said, uh, I, yeah, a lot of people sent me this. I saw Paul Joseph Watson used one of your tweets in his videos today. It was making fun of uh, Jesse Smollett, Smollett, Smollett. Not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, but yeah, Jesse is the guy who uh, did a fake hate crime and got, got busted for it. Um, all right, so we have some responses here. Any murder attempts with hammer on one of your family members lately? So we're starting to see how awesome the Muslim responses are. <laughs> Good one. Good one. That really, uh, that really defends your profit there. All right. Do we have any... I don't know if I'm missing them or what. They're blocking my comments like cowards. Who's blocking your comments? Are you cursing or something? Why are you doing it? Let's go ahead and read this. This is the first comment of yours I've seen, Bismillah. They are blocking my comments like cowards. Filthy, impure cross worshippers. They cannot answer questions, so they block. Well, here I am, a Muslim, but you block me like cowards. Filthy, cursed polytheist. Uh... I have to say, Bismillah, if that's how you talk, I, I can see why they would block you, right? If, if all you're doing here is, is insulting people, I can see why people would block you, right? Does that make sense? Do, do you understand that if you're, if you're not actually contributing anything to a discussion and you're just, you're just heaping abuse on people, that they say, you know what, we're trying to have a conversation here and you're not adding anything, you're just adding insults and we're really not interested in that, so go somewhere else? Sixty-five four is not really about prepucent female children. In Arabic, there are words for female children, and they're used in the Quran, but not in sixty-five four. In sixty-five four, word is nisa, which means uh, women and adult females. Well, let's look that up right now because I have the commentaries. I don't have them pulled up on the screen here. But let's go through Muslim commentary. So this is our defense so far that uh, Surah 65 verse 4 isn't talking about prepubescent girls. So let's go to the greatest Muslim commentators, the greatest, most respected Muslim commentators of all time on this issue. So this is from the Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. It doesn't get any higher than, than Ibn Kathir here. So Tafsir of Ibn Kathir commenting on this verse says, Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause. So, girl who's too old. And that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her older age. Her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based upon the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, uh, Surah 2, verse 228. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. Their idda is three months like those in menopause. So how does Ibn Kathir, who knows the Muslim sources better than all of us here combined, how does Ibn Kathir understand this? He refers uh, that clause, the girls, the, the, the girls who uh, haven't yet reached, who haven't yet reached um, their monthly courses, um, her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles, blah, blah, blah. The same for the young. So he's talking about young, young girls who have not reached the years of menstruation. If you're a young girl who hasn't reached the years of menstruation yet, what are you? You're prepubescent, right? All right. But let's not take Ibn Kathir's word for it. Let's go to Tafsir Jalalain. And as for those of your women who no longer expect to menstruate if you have any doubts about their waiting period their prescribed waiting period shall be three months and also for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age their period shall also be three months so according to tafsir jalalain what is this what is this referring to 
As for those who have not yet menstruated, why? Because of their young age. If you haven't menstruated yet because of your young age, what are you? You're prepubescent. What about Ibn Abbas? Doesn't get any higher than Ibn Abbas, right? This is the guy, this is the founder, this is the inventor of, uh, of Quran commentary, right? Tafsir of Ibn Abbas. And for such of your women as despair of menstruation because of old age, if you doubt about their waiting period, their period of waiting shall be three months. Upon which, now looks, now th this is why this is interesting because you see how the Quran is revealed here, right? Where, um, Muhammad will be revealing, uh, revealing a verse and then someone will actually raise their hand and say, Hey, I've got a question. And then, and then more, more, more Quran comes in response to a person's question. So it's uh, interesting how this happened. So we actually have someone raising his hand saying, wait a minute, I have a question. Could you add this? And then the verse gets expanded a bit. So uh, as for such of your women as despair of menstruation because of their old age, if you doubt about their waiting period, their period of waiting shall be three months. So Muhammad revealed part of the verse upon which another man asked, O messenger of Allah, what about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? Because of their young age, their waiting period is three months. Did you catch that, everyone? Muhammad's revealing revelation from Allah, saying that, hey, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to divorce a, a woman who's gone through menopause, she doesn't have a monthly cycle, so you can't you can't obey the Quran's command to wait three monthly cycles when you're divorcing someone. Um, if you're divorcing someone like that, then instead of waiting three monthly cycles because she doesn't have monthly cycles, then just wait three months. And someone says, "Hey, Muhammad, but what about what about a guy who's divorcing a girl who doesn't have a period yet because she's too young? What about that?" Notice the Quran's response. The Quran's response is not. Get out of here, you sick freak. How dare you suggest, how dare you suggest that you can have sex with a prepubescent girl? How dare you suggest that? Uh, instead, it just says, oh, no, wait, wait three months for them, too. Just wait three months for them. If a girl's too young to have a monthly cycle, she's too young to have a period, which would make her prepubescent, then just wait three months. That's how it works. So, um, looking at that one more time, what about the waiting period? So he, he, he actually asked a question. What about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? Because of their young age, their waiting period shall be three months. So, so think about this. This is giving us the historical background, right? This is giving us historical background. The historical background here is that Muhammad specifically was being asked, what about girls who are too young to have a period? What about them? And Allah gives his answer about divorcing girls who are too, uh, too young to have a monthly cycle. Um, so those are, those are the, the top three classic Muslim commentaries. Um, three of the most, uh, well, Jalalain is, is the two Jalals, but, uh, these are the most respected Muslim commentaries of all time. Um, if you want to go to something modern, uh, probably the most respected commentary in recent times is, uh, is Maududi. And we'll read Maududi's comment, commentary on 65.4. He says, Here one should bear in mind the fact that according to the explanations given in the Quran, the question of the waiting period arises in respect of the women with whom marriage may have been consummated, for there is no waiting period, for there is no waiting period in case divorce is pronounced before the consummation of marriage. So he's saying there's no waiting period. There's no waiting period um, if you haven't consummated the marriage. Therefore, if you're divorcing her and you do have a waiting period, it's because you've had sex with her. Therefore, making mention of the waiting period for the girls who have not yet menstruated clearly proves that it is not only permissible to give away the girl in marriage at this age, but it is also permissible for the husband to consummate marriage with her. Now, obviously, no Muslim has the right, no Muslim has the right to forbid a thing which the Quran has held as permissible. Did you catch that? Let's read, uh, let's read that last part again. Therefore, making mention of the waiting period for the girls who have not yet menstruated clearly proves that it is not only permissible to give away the girl in marriage at this age, so before the age where you've menstruated, 
at this age, but is it is also permissible for the husband to consummate the marriage with her. Now, obviously, no Muslim has the right to forbid a thing which the Quran has held as permissible. Did you see Maududi's reaction here? How how he's saying how dare you Muslims act like this is this is forbidden? How dare you act like it's forbidden in Islam to have sex with a prepubescent girl? Saying how dare you? The Quran says it's so clear right from the Quran. And so it's interesting that Muslims, Muslims who try to argue that Aisha had reached puberty or that she was much older than nine, she was 18 or 19 or something. Um, what are they, what are they doing? Right? Even if Muhammad had never done it, Allah certainly allows it. So if you have, if you actually find it gross and disgusting, Muslims, if you find it revolting for a grown man, especially one in his fifties to climb on top, of a nine-year-old girl, if you find that revolting, then you've got a problem with Allah, because Allah is the one who allows it. All right, I only wanted, I only wanted, um, I only wanted to go an hour, so I'm probably going to cut this off right at nine o'clock. Um, if we want to have another discussion uh, about this, um, that's fine. But Muslims, if you have any more objections that you'd like me to respond to here if you have another defense of muhammad then now's the time to give it and i'm trying to scroll through i'm um hey here we go first and last actually put the link so for everyone who want the hadith collections uh awesome resource to have and if you have those on your computer um if you save the files if you save the pdfs then basically anytime i'm quoting one of the main muslim sources like sahih al-bukhari or sahih muslim something like that uh, if you have those on your laptop and you want that, hey, I want to look that up, then very, very easy to follow along. Uh, all right. Guys, there are there are a ton of comments here. So if you see any, try and draw my attention to them because. Let's see. Why does her age matter? The only reason talk about her marriage is because of her age. That's it. I believe she was older. She was very mature. She was happy. She agreed. She was mature. So think about what's being said here. First, why does her age matter? Are you serious? Are you serious why it matters? Why it matters? That, guys, do you see this? Huh, why, why does her age matter? What, would, would it bother you if she was a baby? Would, would it bother you if Muhammad had sex with a baby? Because you could raise the exact same objection. Why does her age matter? I'll tell you why her age matters. Her age matters because Muslims claim that Muhammad was the greatest man who ever lived, and the Quran justifies this behavior. So if he's being laid down as the pattern of conduct for Muslims, then if the, the pattern of conduct for mankind, the, the man who has Allah's stamp of approval on his life, if that guy had sex with a nine-year-old girl... One, that's, that's relevant for us evaluating whether we should believe in him. Um, but two, this, this has an impact all over the Muslim world, right? There are girls who are suffering because if you start having sex with a girl before her hips have widened and she gets pregnant, she ends up with a lot of problems, right? Let, let me, let me break this down if, if you don't, if you don't understand, right? Look at a girl who hasn't reached puberty yet, right? Her hips are, are very narrow. Right? What happens during puberty? Well, Muslim, many Muslims have the, have this, uh, this, uh, old enough to bleed, old enough to breed mentality. Absolutely disgusting. Namely, as soon as a girl starts breeding, just go start having sex with her, right? So these are, these are for the, these are for the guys in Muslim countries who, uh, believe that you, you should wait until a girl's reached puberty, even though the Quran doesn't say that, right? But there, there are still many Muslims who believe you should wait until a girl has reached puberty. But they really think, hey, as soon as you reach puberty, you're ready to go. You're ready to have kids. Wrong. Wrong. Puberty is a process that takes a few years, right? So you start having your monthly cycle. You, a girl has her first period. That's, uh, that's an outward sign that her body is starting to change. But over the next few years, her hips go from uh, very narrow and they slowly widen. Her hips get wider. Her birth canal widens, right? Her body physically changes. So if you get her pregnant as soon as she reaches puberty, and she gets pregnant and her birth canal is not yet wide enough for the baby to come out, then you start having to have C-sections and stuff like that. And I hope, I hope you're in a, you're, you're in a modern 
in a modern hospital when it happens and not, you know, some village or something like that where the girl's going to die, right? Why? Why is this relevant? Oh, this, this is what Muhammad taught. Do, do, you, do you really not see why it's a problem? Oh, well, you know, so what if she's nine years old? Who cares? Eight, seven, six. What's the difference? All sex. If it's got a hole, go ahead and have sex. You're not, do you really not understand why this is disgusting and a problem? Especially for the guy who sort of sets the tone for the behavior of all future Muslims. All right. Anyway, and guys, keep in mind, keep in mind, there are people who think like this. Who, who cares? Who cares if a girl is nine, eight, seven? Doesn't matter. You're, you're allowed to have sex with her. I don't see what the problem is. Uh, yeah. Very interesting. Um, all right. It's 856. Do we have a... I'll tell you what, since we're going to wrap this up here, since we're going to wrap this up, Muslims, uh, because I'm still only about two thirds of the way scrolling through the comments. So uh, doesn't look like I'm going to get to, to scroll through all there. And I don't want this. I don't want this to I don't want to be here for uh, for two hours. Um, We come in here a little off topic. Right. This is righteous. This is the this is the, this is the same Muslim. Did you cry when your buddy perished from stomach cancer? Um, no, I didn't. I'm a psychopath. We don't cry over stuff like that. Um, although I did get teary eyed um, when I was hugging his parents at his funeral. And that was only basically three times in my life where I got sort of choked up or teary eyed over something bad happened. When I was growing up, I could cry, but I would like be in a rage. You know, if I'm enraged at someone, um, I could cry like that. But something bad happening or being sad, no, just, uh, just I did not have those emotional reactions. So, um, but I have had them since. So even though you're trying to be as nasty as possible. And by the way, do you guys see this? Like this, th this is, hey, we're talking about Muhammad. We're being serious. We're going to go through the evidence. Hey, did you cry when your buddy perished from stomach cancer? These are the responses. Now, now, keep in mind, I get comments like this dozens of times a day that I see, right? Not, you know, I, I don't follow most comments on YouTube and stuff like this, but I get this all the time. Uh, in fact, see if I can pull it up. Uh, I, same thing on Twitter. Look, go to Twitter and look where I where I posted the posted the uh, uh, the announcement of the live stream. Look at the Muslim comment. Um, hey, is this why your buddy died? Blah 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 blah. We are dealing with some of the absolutely most sickening. Uh, apologists on the planet, right? These are the guys who are, who are, who are coming for discussion. And to be clear, keep in mind, this guy doesn't represent all Muslims or something like that. You, you, we, we have Muslims in the, in the chat section who are, uh, who you can have a discussion with and so on. Um, but think about that. I mean, this is, uh, this is some interesting stuff. Uh, Jeepers Creepers says, David, I have a question. Would it create a problem for you as a believer if Jesus said, marry nine-year-old children, would that make you question God? And would that question your uh, faith? Um, I mean, it wouldn't make me question whether God exists or something like that. But if Jesus said it and it's laid down, if it were laid down as this is something that uh, all future generations should follow and that this is the, the pattern of conduct for men, that men should marry nine-year-old girls to follow the uh, example. Yeah, we would really have to think about why that is. If there is, if there is, are we missing something here? Are we missing something about, um, are we missing something uh, about morality here? Why, why would this be? So, um, yeah, that, that would, that would be part of examining Christianity would be, uh, examining commands like that. Um, fortunately, fortunately, what we're told is we're, we are not, <laughs> it's better to have a millstone hung around your neck than to, uh, lead a, lead a little one astray there. Um, all right. Well, it's, we're at nine. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and, uh, lay this down because I understand, I understand that Muslims do have objections. I'm just not seeing them and I don't have enough time to go through all the comments here. Um, just going to say this guys, this video is going to be its own video. Muslims post your objections in the comments section of this video when it's done. So not in the chat, post it in the comments section. And in a few days, we'll have another live stream. I'll take screenshots of your objections. We'll put them up on the screen and we'll go through them. And keep in mind, we're not, this is not, we're not talking about defending 
Muhammad's actions right now, if you have an objection to the claim that Aisha was nine years old. So if you're one of the people who wants to say she was 18 or 19 and all of Muhammad's companions got it wrong and Aisha herself got it wrong and everyone just got it wrong. They didn't know how old she was. They couldn't tell the difference between a nine-year-old girl and a 19-year-old girl. That's why they all got it wrong. If you have those objections, if you have objections that you're going to claim that, go ahead, uh, put those in the comments section and we'll have another live stream in a couple of days. Uh, as for tomorrow... I believe tomorrow I will be on with Abdullah Samir, who's an ex-Muslim. He's an atheist now, but we are going to, uh, I'm going to be interviewing him. So I'm going to interview, um, I'm going to uh, interview him about why he left Islam, things like that, how he came to his present views. And uh, so you'll want to be here tomorrow. I believe that will be, I believe we set up eight, eight o'clock tomorrow night with Abdullah Samir. And after that, uh, maybe the next day or the next day, something like that, we'll have another time where we go through our Muslim friends' objections to the claim that Aisha was nine years old. So, all right, we will see you all then. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, learn those sources. Learn those sources on the age of Aisha. Need to to keep people from misrepresenting uh, what Islam teaches. All right, see you all tomorrow.